In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a couple different types of graphs and displays in Excel. And you can follow along with my video by opening up the attached Excel file that is loaded on Blackboard along with this video. So the first graph we're going to look at is a bar chart. And a bar chart is typically used for qualitative data, where a histogram is typically used for quantitative data. So to make a bar chart in Excel, we have our data pulled up, and this represents the number of students taking classes on different campuses in one of my classes from the other semester. But what I'm going to do with my data is I'm going to highlight all of my data. So I'm going to highlight the categories and the frequencies. And then up at the top, we go to insert over to the very first. In, it says insert column or bar graph if you hover over it. And we want to pick the most basic 2D column graph option. Keep it simple, typically for a good graph. So once we've inserted our bar graph, if you click on it, it should take you to the design tab and then go over to the left where it says quick layout. And let's change it to quick layout nine so that it automatically gives us places to put access titles and labels. So if I click on the below the horizontal axis where it says access title, if I double click, I can change that to be the, which campus students are on. And then I can change my vertical title to tell the frequency or how many students are taking classes on that campus. And maybe I'll title it something like, where, uh, where do Wake Tech students go? Yeah. Your titles and labels might be different than mine and that's okay. And then I'm going to click where it says series one over on the right side of the graph and hit the delete button on my keyboard because I really don't need that series there and it makes the graph a little bit cleaner. So this is a good bar graph. You don't need to make the bars touch if you're looking at qualitative data. One other thing you can do is right click on one of the bars and add a data label. And I like doing this because it tells you specifically the height of each bar and sometimes it's not always clear. Like, I don't know if I would have noticed that the North Campus was exactly 18 just by looking at the vertical scale. So I like to right click and add that data label to make my graph really, really clear. So I'm going to the next tab at the bottom of the Excel sheet. We have pie charts and we make a pie chart very similar to the way we made a, pie, a bar chart. Uh, we highlight, in this case, eye colors and then the number of students that had that color. And then we go up to the top where it says insert again. And this time we're going to pick the pie graph option and always pick the most basic 2D graph option. The 3D options get very distorted graphs very quickly. So once I have my graph, then again on the left side, we've got our quick layout menu. And I like to change pie charts to quick layout one. You can play around and if you like a different one, as long as it conveys all the information, you can pick a different quick layout. But I like layout one for pie charts. And the reason I like this is it automatically labels my graph, including the percents. So in this class, 50% of students had brown eyes, and 27% had blue eyes, 15% had hazel, and then 8% had other. And I just like having that information labeled right there on the graph. And then I can change my chart title to be just eye colors. And so that's a nice looking pie chart in Excel. So the next one on here is a scatter plot. And a scatter plot shows two different types of quantitative data together, and it lets us look at trends. And so here we have data at ice cream cells at different temperatures and degrees Celsius, and then the dollar amount of ice cream sold that day. And we wanna see, do people buy more ice cream when it's hot outside, or do they buy more ice cream when it's cold, or is there no correlation? So to make the scatter plot, I'm gonna highlight all of my data, and then go up to the top where it says insert, and pick the dot option with just the dots. We don't want any lines connecting the dots at this point. And then again, click on your graph. That should bring up the design tab. Go over to quick layout on the left. And let's see, quick layout one looks pretty good. That gives us a place to put titles. So down here at the bottom, our input is temperature. And P E R A T. It's hard to type and talk all at the same time. So this is in degrees Celsius. And then up on the vertical axis, we have uh, cells in dollars. And then at the top, I'm just going to call it ice cream cells. 
then I'm going to click where it says series one again and hit the delete button on my keyboard. And so this gives us a scatter plot showing what temperature it was in degrees Celsius and then how much ice cream was sold. And you can see that our graph is trending upwards. So it looks like there is a positive correlation and we'll talk more about correlation later on, but it does appear that as the temperature goes up, our ice cream cells also get up, which makes sense. You tend to want more ice cream when it's hot outside to cool yourself off. All right, and then our last type of graph that we're going to look at in Excel is very similar to a time series, or it's very similar to a scatter plot, but this one's a time series graph. And this specifically shows how something is changing over time. So our data here looks at the deer population in Michigan in thousands. So when they first started tracking the deer, there were 6,000 deer. And then over the next 30 years, it increased to 177,000 deer. So to see this as a time series, we highlight all of our data and then insert and go to scatter plot again. But instead of clicking just the dots, you can pick either the curved line or the straight line. And I tend to like the straight line. I think it looks cleaner, but you could pick the curved line between the dots if you want to. And then click on your graph, takes you to the design tab, change it to quick layout one again. And so we can label this our time in years and then our population in thousands. And then this is deer in Michigan. And as always, I click the series one and hit delete on my keyboard. And so what we see is that we started off at 6,000 deer and they reproduced pretty rapidly and then eventually leveled off around 177,000 deer. So if you are familiar with the biology term of carrying capacity, it looks like it leveled off at its carrying capacity. And that is the number of animals that the environment can support in terms of food and shelter. And um, it's, it's kind of the natural dying off reproduction rate where it has stabilized. So that shows us how our deer have changed in Michigan over these 30 years.